Let's call the meeting to order at 5.05. And the first item on the agenda is next steps on the aquifer overlay district uh, zones. Brant did a very good summary, which um, I think we could send to anybody who wants it, who didn't get it directly. Um, and I don't know whether we need to read it. Uh, what he did is point out that the original aquifer protection overlay district uh, map was done for the for the um, 2006 and it's, I guess, not 100% clear whether it encompassed both the district wells and the department wells or not, but it appears that it had both. And I think, um, and then this was revised in 2007. And according to the notes that Kimberly sent from the 2007 town meeting presentation, it was because it had been discovered, or it was, I guess, known that the water district wells were in um, rock, rather fragmented rock, but previously they hadn't had the hydrological study to know what the protection area for those should be. So the zones were revised to reflect that. Judy? And I can put this, I can share this, but I have I have a one that includes questions and one that doesn't. Do you want the shorter one or the long one, just longer one displayed? I guess the only one I have has questions, so. Okay, there's a we'll shorter one that's we'll the housing it. committee status, so. Yeah, it's the other one. Okay. See if I can do this. I think this is it. I don't know that, you know, if, you, if people want to read all the way through. Um, the district, the district wells were decommissioned and abandoned in 2022 and uh, and we voted to change the bylaw to remove references to those wells, but we did not change the aquifer overlay district for lack of information and for some desire to protect um, existing other wells in the area. Um, we have been in the meantime, researching the maps, which uh, thanks to Wayne's help and, and Kimberly at FERCOG's help, I gather we now have. Um, so Wayne has indicated from the board that the commissioners are good to go back to the original water district zones. And if you'd like to elaborate on that, Wayne, or maybe I should finish. There, there is an issue with the backup well, and if that has to, and whether uh, additional protection might in the future be needed for the backup well. So, Wayne, would you like to explain more? Yeah, we're, I don't know how to explain it, but the district wells are in the town's main well. And supply the highest values throughout the year for the wind, for what the town is for water. But the part is that your backup well also does the same in case the main one goes down. And as it is now, the backup only doesn't, it's about half the size of the main well. So, Wayne, Wayne you're, you're breaking up. No. <laughs> So, 
we're hoping, I mean, cost wise, we're hoping we can just take you know, six inch well that's down here now and we put it with a 12 inch well to match the middle well we have. You're but, still breaking up, Wayne. I think, let me try and summarize. The, the, the backup well is at the current time not adequate to meet the, the required daily requirement if needed, and you'd, you'd have. You're going to try testing to see if that can be done. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, cost wise, what we're hoping is to just replace the six inch well now with the 12 inch. But okay. if they don't allow that, then we probably have to go searching for another spot to do well, which means. Where is the backup well? Else, you know, I mean, we're going to have to extend these metrics then. <laughs> Wait, this is John. Can I step in here? Can you hear? Can people hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, because because uh, I'm, I'm John Luke and I'm the Water Commissioner, and I've talked with us with Wayne and George and George, George and we've been looking at you know the system thoroughly and and because doing a long range plan for it. And all Wayne's really talking about with the wells is two wells side by side down there. One is a smaller casing; it has less production capacity. And we need to increase our capacity to meet future demands and satisfy DEP minimums for, for you know, our ability to produce water. So we're going to look at, right, next thing we're looking at is can we take the six inch well, the smaller well, and redevelop it as a larger production well to meet the, the, the minimums we need to meet. So that's what we're looking at that. But how that impacts the wellhead protect or the source protection area in, in the zoning map is probably irrelevant at this point. That, you know, I, I come, to town just four years ago, but from a, a drinking water background. And these protection areas, the what you've got in this zone two is a hydrogeologic, hydrogeologically defined area. And if you, you pump a little more water out of those wells where we are, it's not gonna change that. It shouldn't change it at all. Uh, if, we went, if we went down there and dug another well, a third well and started pulling more water, that might be another story because DEP would probably require us to do a redelineation of the recharge area. But if we just redevelop the one well and make it a little bigger, it probably won't impact it at all. It's already in, in production. And, you know, and, to, and I, I guess what I, just to make sure I'm clear, when you talk about going back to the original map, map that was in the aquifer protection, you know, bylaw when it was put in place, I'm looking at one that I think Wayne gave you that comes from a Franklin County, County regional governments and it shows the, all those little, those areas very clearly. And you can see, the, the village district up on the hill has just a, a red circle around another circle. And that's the interim wellhead protection area that would have been established before they did any kind of hydrogeologic definition. And yeah. that's the kind of map we're talking about. If you go back to that and just take out that little circle, <laughs> you've got the originally hydrogeologically delineated source protection area. That's all. Thank you. So does that mean we're in good shape in terms of protection of the of the wells? Yeah, protection of the well, area is is perfect. And the well, I should say it's perfect. It's hydrogeologically, you know, scientifically done as opposed to my taking a guess. And... Right. And um, the two, the wells that were abandoned for the village, um, uh, from the village water company. They 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 can't play a role in uh, an aquifer protection and being backup wells, providing it as another source. And what I'm, I'm referring to is a conversation that I mean, Hadley's been having about um, acquiring land around uh, some discontinued wells to to make sure that they've got enough capacity for future events, not necessarily today. The, in terms of the aquifer protection area that's delineated, can can those de, um, decommission wells play a role in this? Those and should we be thinking those three wells up there are rock wells and they have very little production. They don't produce much water at all. So when it compares to the amount that we use from our wells down here by the river. They're just not feasible to use them. 
once they decommission, if they decommission them, once they decommission as a public water supply, that that's it. They go away you know, to get them re to reuse them again as a public water supply. You have to go through a new source approval process with DEP. They they're because they take them off the books. So well, well, what I would say, um, what I'd like some assurance is that as much as you can with the boundaries that could change based on different circumstances, is that um, five years from now, we're not regretting that we didn't protect those wells. That some 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 events occur that, that, that those could, could have played a role, but we can't because we didn't in 2024 or 23 take the, take the steps to put them in reserve. I don't know what the district's doing with them. Wayne, do you know what they're doing with them? Oh, what's yeah, the district? Yeah, the district? Yeah. Well, they played over here. Isn't that? Is somebody actually speaking or is that in someone's background? Yeah, I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything. I'm oh, hearing. Thank you, thank you, Julie. <laughs> Wayne's down at the pump house. I can see the green thing around him. Yeah. Yeah. The pump's just a few months. You might be hearing that. <laughs> So wait, okay. I had a question. The question was, do we know what, what they're doing with the, we, we take over the district wells, they are ours now because they merged or are they still, still separate? And no. Wayne, your, your sound is coming through, I don't know, Voyager and, you know. Yeah. So, Kind of strange under under something under C, I think. You have another microphone because wow, <laughs> or maybe get off and log in again. I don't well, or use the chat. I think though, my my understanding is that they're just sitting there. Well, the we could we could find out from Nicholas. The district will take control of the wells, and they're supposed to decommission them. By decommission them, they'll most likely fill them with concrete so that they don't pollute what's, what little water is there. Okay. Hmm. Decommission them, you take them out of use, they're just gone. So they should. Oh, we can, we can find out what the future plans for them are. Uh, uh, yeah. George, what George mentioned, though, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying about having them in reserve. But I remember coming to that system years and years ago, and there was a real issue with water quality out of it as well as quantity. Highly high amounts of manganese in that water. Uh, the aquifer, the, 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 the hydrogeologic work that was done when the system was put together, which I you know, got a good look at after I joined, the, became a commissioner, uh, it shows pump test stuff, which we're, that's why we're gonna try to see if we can redevelop the small and yielding well for more water, because it shows that the yield of that aquifer could be considerably more than we're taking out. You know, it's do you still have a copy or do you know where to find a copy of that study because we haven't been able to locate it? That's where Wayne comes in. I, I remember seeing that paperwork's been moved around in boxes. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I don't know who's got it. I don't know if George Ansel has the box. I, I got the box that was Paul Fleurial's about the development stuff and, and there was a lot of, a lot of informative stuff in there. 
you know, there was a lot of work done to, to find those wells for this community site. Well, it sounds like one next step is to find out what's planned for those for the district wells. And also that it's clear that the, the, the water commissioners currently feel that if, if the backup well can be utilized or, or stay as the backup well, I guess, I'm not sure the terminology, that the current, that the original Put them on the plate. overlay district for that for that area is adequate, is that right? No, it's fine. I don't, and I don't see where it would change. Okay. But, you know, the map that's on the screen right now, you take away the orange circle from where the, uh, yes. the wells are for the district and just keep the lines the way they are on there, and that's it. Okay. We had talked about, maybe it's time to go to the questions, Sarah. Stop. Okay. Grant left us with three questions that he thought were, were the next steps. Uh, one thing that I, I think he perhaps didn't get quite right in his summary was that it was my understanding that the planning board had decided that we would like to commission another hydrological study, um, partly because we thought that the situation might be different when you're relying on one well for the whole town. Um, also because of climate change and the fact that water flows and, and perhaps chemicals are different the kinds of chemicals one worries about these days are different than than they were 20 years ago. Um, it sounds like the commissioners don't necessarily think that's that's advised or necessary anyway. I don't know about advisable. I don't see why it would do it, quite frankly. Okay. You may, don't forget that this water is tested constantly for contaminants. The new contaminants you read about are already being tested for. No, I understand that. It's just different water flows, different uh, rainfall change. patterns, different velocity of rainfall patterns. And as an amateur, I have no idea what those mean, but I know that everything else we do on the planning board to do with water is so outdated. The standards are so outdated that um, you, you, it's very difficult to design to evaluate projects and their drainage and and septic and the like. But so anyway, the questions were, should we put it on hold till the status of a department backup well is finalized? Um, and it sounds to me from everything that's been said that that would make sense. There's not much point going to town meeting with the revision that we have to change shortly. If, if in the course of the management of this water system over say, the next 10 years, if we, you know, we develop that well, have more production, all that stuff will be integral and part of getting it all approved and getting it done. If there's any expansion or change to the protection area, the commissioners and the, and the superintendent would bring it to your attention, come to everybody's attention because we'd be seeking to change it. I understand that. I, I guess it sounds like I was assuming that this this evaluation of the backup well was fairly imminent. Is that not the case? <laughs> I mean, I guess when, when do you expect to, to know whether another backup well will be needed or not? Maybe that's the question. Maybe a year after, fairly soon. Since we can't do it, talk to Wayne because he's <laughs> yeah, and then I guess at that point, then you'd have to start searching, and then you need a hydrological study. Well, we, we really, I and mean, that's why we're going to evaluate this one. I mean, the, the cost of finding another site to develop a public water supply is really not pa palatable to this to us, in this town. It's, 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 you're talking millions, and it could be a lot of money. Uh, if we have a, a way to get more water out of the existing land that we own and, and use for water supply, and that's the obvious direction to go in. 
until it's proven, you know, ineffective. But, but that that doesn't address that doesn't include um, not decommissioning the water company wells. That's not part of this conversation. No. Is that correct? Yeah, Wayne's nodding. And as far as I know, George. I think it's true, though, Tom, that the water supply from the department wells was adequate to cover the district at the time that those were established. They didn't have to, but as we can tell now that there's enough water there or capacity. I'm sorry, George, I muted you for the dog. <laughs> you know how to unmute? <laughs> Wayne's self-muting. George has been muted. Well, Sarah, can you unmute him or does he need to do it himself? He has to do it himself. I can ask him to unmute, but... Uh, George, it's down in your lower left corner. It'll say, uh, yeah, I don't even know what it says anymore. Mute. Mute. Hit where it says mute and it should unmute you. <laughs> I think we can stop screen sharing now, Sarah. Good, because I can't find myself. Somewhere. I don't know what I did to me. George, do you see down in your lower left hand corner where there's a microphone? Oh, if you click on that, it'll okay. go back to green. Hey. Hey. You hear me now? We can hear you. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, we have two wells. The 12 inch well is our production well. The six inch, we use the six inch but that was the original well that was put in back when the system was first built. What we'd like to do is do a pump test on a six inch well to determine how much more water we could get out of that six inch well. Right now, it's about, they're about 75 feet apart. So if we can take that six inch well and get more production out of it, that's good. Maybe we could drive a 12 inch well right beside the six inch well. We'd still be in the, the 400 foot radius for protection. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Thank Can you. you. Clarify what 400 foot radius for protection means for this lay person here. That's well, you can't do anything. When we originally put the wells in, DEP said that we had to have a 400 foot radius around the wells for protection. I see. You, you know, you can't fertilize the land. You can't do anything with the land. Language in the, for the state and the feds is that you own or, or, or control a 400 foot radius around your source, around your well. And that's no, nothing but water supply related activities there. And believe me, over across my career, I, I chased lawnmowers and gas cans out of, out of pump houses because people would put the risk right where their well was, not realizing it. So. That won't change. It still does mean that. No, that's it's one, that the, mm -hmm. it's one of the zone, zones in the bylaw, Julie. You'll see see it defined. It, it would refer to zone one, two, and three. One's a sanitary protective radius. Two is considered the area that recharges your wells. And three is, is land that drains into that. Uh, why this one, this delineation has this one area off in the northwest corner that is zone three. And, Nothing else, I don't know, but I'm not the hydrogeologist to find it. So. <laughs> um, the other question Brad has is, is uh, I'll read it. Uh, should the planning board proceed with a zoning map revision and redraw that redraws the aquifer prediction, aquifer protection district boundaries to match what is shown on the map 
we have just received from the water department. Is there an opinion about that? So uh, that's what we were looking at. The yellow orange dots are the 400 radius. The two on our map is the recharge area for wells, the two wells down on like on the Hatfield border. And that area three is that is that for the water district in the middle of town? Water district is in our zone three. So our zone, okay. So we need to have a zone three and it happens to be where the wells from the district are. You know, for, for the for our water systems, for my purposes as a, as a commissioner, that's the least area of concern. You know, the, the by a man's definition of the zone two, they'll call it the area of, of, of recharge areas, like a drop of water that gets into the aquifer there is ending up in your well. You know, it's filtered, it's, you know, it's, you know, hopefully there's a lot of land there and the water's following an old channel from the Mill River that's buried under clay. So it's, it's what they call a confined aquifer. It's an interesting source. It's, it's a wonderful source, even though it has manganese and calcium <laughs> problems we got to deal with. Uh, but in the meantime, it's, it's a good source of water and it's apparently quite abundant and we can tap it for more, hopefully. Which, as George says, we have to do a pump test to see if, that, if it will produce that much down there. So the water, the water district boundaries have subsumed the water company into into the water district boundaries. Is that yes. is that accurate? To some extent. Partially. Pardon? Well there was some were there some lines in the zoning. I don't have the zoning map in front of me, but I, I did some lines that re rectangled off and made uh, the area a little bit larger up by the district wells in relation to the map that I'm looking at right now, the one you had up on the screen that Wayne showed you that was just has the orange circle for the water district. Yeah. So I don't know where, I, I don't know, I'm, personally, I don't remember how much bigger it was. Well, it goes, it goes up to the, to the north, to the northeast, um, it, up into the hills. As as the as the zone zone two for the for the district wells is is off up there, and one of the problems we had was you couldn't just take away the the district wells be, the district zones because of the overlap with with the zone three from the department wells, and so having this map is a big help. That map just replaces the one you, you got in the zoning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that work is done. Evidently. And they they feel the hyd hydrological study is adequate. And we it sounds like it's not going to be so in the imminent if if the if the Another backup well is needed. It's not going to be something that that anybody knows about for some time, or the location of it anyway. Uh, we hope to get. We, we're aiming to get the pump test done in 2024, and if that happens, we get some decisions. We'll know more by the end of the year. But you know, if that yeah. happens, there is money involved. <laughs> so we have to raise revenues. So right now we've established that that map, we have found the map prior to the district and that's what we were showing. And if we bring, if that's the map we want to do for the revision of zoning, that will correctly protect where the wells and the possible, hopefully, the backup well will be. Yes. Okay. I think this study was done originally when they... Kaufman and Richardson was an engineer that we employed or hired back in uh, 86. And they did a lot of studies, you know, about where the ledge was under the ground and everything. Uh, what they did is they set off dynamite charges and they watched 
the reaction with the sensors in the ground. And that's how they determined where they thought the water was coming from. So it, there was quite a bit of thought put into that drawing this map. It wasn't just somebody drawing lines. Well, that's obvious looking at it. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Maybe next time we have one, that'll be done by artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> They'll send drones with sensors on it. <laughs> so for our questions, number one, we really shouldn't put it on hold because the time frame of the possible backup is a year plus. So we should... It's well beyond a year plus because... Yeah. It's a year just to determine if if you need to start looking and then you have to look and then you have to do the study after you look, after you find. So we should have an updated map for the next, to vote on for the next annual town meeting. So that answers one, uh, the first question. And the second question, if you all agree that these are the boundaries that correctly protect the geological area and the recharge area. And it kind of answers question number three. We really don't need a study. Uh, if the well, reach, if the backup well issue comes, there's going to need to be a study, correct? There'll be analysis of some sort. Somebody's gonna look okay. at it. Because so anything, we do, anything we do with the supply to increase usage, You've got to run it by DEP. And yep. DEP will want information. They love information. So, you know, there it is. So what I'm seeing is that we should move forward with this found map to be the new revised zoning map revision. Tom and Judy? I seems to be the case. Seems to be the case. And as new things come up with aquifer and the wells, we'll be seeing you folks again, huh? Sure. <laughs> well, we're going to count on you to explain this to town meeting because I think it's always difficult to take away protections. You're not really taking it away. You're just adjusting. It wasn't that much different <laughs> area, I don't think. But... Well, good. You, you keep making the case. You convinced us. Hopefully you'll convince town meeting. <laughs> Well, in terms, you know, again, if you were going to keep those, as the gentleman mentioned, if we were going to keep the, the district wells, the, old dist the village district wells as backups and use them, no, that wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Well, we, we said practic practically as system managers, I don't see why we would keep those when we've got a better supply of where we are and all the hardware that we need and all that. But you still have to treat that water up there if you pull it out. Yeah. And it's not the to capacity. Yeah. It would really help us. Well, thank you very much. I think you've you've been a huge help. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, I'm gonna go have some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We're jealous. Thanks. I appreciate being able to partake in this, and I'm gonna leave now too. Bye. Right. Can we consider we took a formal vote? I think we all agreed. Okay. Well, we're going to have to vote on it to bring it before the, to put it on. Yeah, public hearing and everything. everything. Yeah. Okay. We'll be voting on this lots. Sorry about the intruder. Just getting okay. even once the dog's left. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Um, the rest is updates. The exit 35 study committee is me. Um, and I hope Sylvie will pipe in if I get bogged down or too discouraged. Um, if you remember, this is a group that is supposed to study how to revitalize or, or get, I guess that's the wrong term, improve foot traffic and commercial activity in the, in the area around the Sugarloaf shops and the diner and that area. And I'd hoped we'd have a diagram to show you tonight, but the consultant hasn't come forward with the last set of plans yet. 
Um, I, I did ask him for those, but I haven't seen them just yet, the presentation that he gave us. Thank you. Um, we, we've had three meetings, four maybe, four. Um, I find the progress to be very painfully slow and the consultant not overly helpful, but that's personal opinion. This, the area is difficult. Too many state roads, uh, the buildup over I-91 making lots low wetlands. Um, and what the group has talked about is having a gateway area and re rezoning so that hopefully maybe I'm I guess I'm the one that's pushing it hardest but mixed use residential zoning in that area which is also something the housing production plan recommended um, it would be commercial activity on the first floor and um, House, housing above, maybe with some design standards. The consultant is talking about, a, I don't know, like a street. I don't, have, I don't have a word for it, Sylvia. He, pedestrian mall maybe or something or a village-like street area down <laughs> on the old state road down past where the dentist is and down there to the Deerfield line. He was not able to answer questions about parking um, or traffic. And, um, and and I I know traffic is a concern of this committee. I looked at the street and a lot and of where, it is where, above, where is there above gray. I'm sorry, Tom. Where's where there enough land, a, a, a contiguous piece of land in the acreage that something like this could be done? Seems like such a fragmented area interspersed with um, wetlands. Yeah, well, we're talking behind the Sugarloaf shops and and rezoning that area of small houses and small businesses. Okay. So it's an existing use area that hopefully would evolve with different zoning. But there's there's matter of transition, there's matter of whether it's feasible, I mean, turns out one of the lots was a brownfield site and we don't know if it's hazardous. Um, so there are yeah, a lot where of- old Fox was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they had phase one cleanup, but not phase two, I gather. So, but one reason I wanted to mention it is because I would like to push for, for the for the mi mixed use residential to be something that we keep on our agenda for uh, or on our list to consider for town meeting this year, especially since it was in the housing production plan report too. Um, although it's not one that they prioritize, but I, I do think it's one of the more promising ones. So, so I don't know mm -hmm. whether anybody, whether the group will wind up recommending or not, but it's something I think we should be thinking about. Judy, did you have a chance to dust off the, the master plan that had the mixed use residential for on Christian Lane? No, I didn't. Um, we talked about it for the housing production plan. And I mean, one, one thing that's happened there since then is three or four of those or two or three of those parcels are now under APR. So it became a oh. little less um, I think what three maybe I don't know. Um, so that's it's a little less enticing as an area than it was then, but it might still be something worth looking at. Sylvie, maybe you could find that. It might be. Could you add that to your list, Sylvie? And I don't know whether I'm it was sure you list. said. Um... The old master plan. I'm not sure whether it was that uh, or preliminary. We did. I know it was part of the master plan that, oh, okay. that I worked on ages ago. Okay, and I something that Nicholas and I were on 
we recommended it, uh, I would say around 2007 or so. But the, the idea was that um, you have the fire department there, you have the, the, the town, the town, town uh, uh, department of public works there. There could be anchors, you had the police station there, and then you those become anchor village and small village anchors, um, New England small village anchors for a mixed use district. Well, you know, and time, you said I, this would be a Christian, well, Christian Lane Christian between Lane. between uh, five and ten and on Plain Road. But I mean, would, would okay. that same concept apply to the um, one sixteen um, route route five uh, corridor there? It's just a resource. It might be. I, I forget what the details yeah. are. It might be a resource that. Um, would save some time developing other and reinventing the wheel. Thank you. Good, good thing. I did, I've heard rumor, but I think it's pretty solid and somebody probably has more definite information. Um, I thought Roberts is, and the diner is having some pretty serious renovations there is what I heard. Well, I have heard that they want to move the diner. Right, because they're going to put in much better bathroom facilities and a better store, particularly to attract truckers. That's interesting. And it's part of the... Back. It's part of the... There's a lot of, lot of activity like that going on at these truck stops um, and building them, making them more friendly for EV uh, vehicles, electric vehicles charging stations and while you have people waiting to charge their car you go in and have some food and go buy do buy things and develop them into small commercial centers there was just an article i think today in the times talking about that and i think that's what robert is pursuing there isn't really one in this area there's farther south but that's so that's what I've heard. Particularly the bathrooms are need some serious updating to attract those people, the people who are need overnights and need better facilities for long term. So the two sets of people, the, the truckers and the Tesla drivers. Yeah. And that's what they're that's what they're trying to do. Ernola beer. Okay. <laughs> Wine, wine, wine. Hit all the uh, hit all the stereotypes right out of me, right? So it's going slow, Judy. That's the message. Yeah, it's I. Uh, to be fair to the consultant, it's a it's a pretty impossible site to work with. Yeah. Yeah. There's very very limited area there. Limited. It's very constrained and very limited. Yes. And wet. Very yes. wet. Yeah, I think everybody started by thinking that lot south of the diner was was could was developable, and Scott Jackson says no. So and he well, wrote people, the people who wanted to put in the self storage kept bumping into this, weren't there? Yeah, we looked at a proposal for self storage that didn't get off the ground because of the wetness. He said he reviewed something like, I don't know, 15 proposals over the years. And I mean, he actually came to our meeting and to, yeah. to tell the tell the guy not to, don't bother with any expenses on this. You're not gonna get through. The so. latest marijuana one was a very, I was very entertained by that meeting. You've missed some interesting ones, so. So then, <laughs> do we need to do any? I I don't think there's any more on that. It's it's slow, but anyway, keep keep that in mind. Thank you, Judy. Quick. Housing production plan update. Um, Brett did.
basically said that the production plan had been approved. It's been sent to sent to the state. Um, the housing committee has met, and there are consensus on on. Um, it doesn't say that necessarily that it's zoning things, but they've reached consensus on two priority areas, reduce bar barriers to accessory apartments and incentive buys affordable housing units. Um, so we, did you sit in on this meeting? Can you? Sorry, my screen got all funny. Um, your, the the housing production meeting. Yeah, the most recent well, housing house. committee meeting since then. The one he summarized. Um, again. I didn't. Um, I attended the one before last, but I wasn't able to make the the very last meeting that they had. Okay. Well, it sounds like they are going to recommend um, that we consider changes to the accessory apartment bylaw, and I don't know about incentivize um, it sounds like they didn't have specific recommendations for for quote incentivizing affordable housing i had suggested to them uh, a bylaw change that was modeled after the repurposing of historical buildings ones where it would allow um, a lot that didn't meet the regular dimensional standards for housing to be used with a special permit approval by the CBA it, if they um, certified it or deeded it to be an accessory housing. Um, which I think would would be fairly effective in Waitley, but I guess we should wait and see what they recommend to us. My takeaway from the preliminary thing is there was a lot of um, recommendations for different boards of actions. So is there some homework we need to be that was prioritized for us so we can get that onto our long-term agenda? Well, there was a list of bylaws to change, um, and one okay. of them, and one of them was make all the lots smaller or make it lots smaller in Agres One. Um, another was allow accessory apartments by right, allow them to be bigger, um, that kind of thing. It was a long enough list that I think it sounds like they're coming back with some recommendations. I. Maybe we should at, at a, some future meeting sit down and see if we have priorities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just seemed like that there was a lot we could, we needed to pick what we could do to help and what our priorities were. Yeah. But I think okay. it should be when Brandt is here because he's the housing committee representative. Definitely. And it's also an excuse to postpone it, doing it. <laughs> Yep. Good. And then I had the resource replacement fee on mm -hmm. the agenda just because I didn't know what was happening with it. And I know that Sylvia, and this is a place we need you again. Um, yep, I'm here. If. I don't, I've been CCing you on these these memos, but this is something that we put in the solar bylaw that if, if uh, a large solar facility uses land in chapter, they then have to pay a resource replacement fee as compensation and the money goes into the, to the community preservation open space bucket mm. 
and the bylaw requires that the select board recalculate that this be recalculated every year and the select board do it based mm -hmm. on changes in assessments and I don't think it's been done, but I, I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah, I can certainly check on that. Um, I know that I Cynthia, produced, like Cynthia produced the numbers, the numbers. Hmm. or at least the assessments. I don't think she did. She, she produced the inputs, but she didn't produce the final number. Okay. And I think you you or Brian should have the formula that was used. Um, yeah, that does sound familiar. So um, yeah, I'll check up on that. Yeah, because somehow this has to get on the calendar. So the select board does this every year when the assessments are available. OK. So we need the final numbers, and we need it on the calendar so it can be approved for this year? Yeah, I mean, if somebody comes and wants to build, it should have been voted before they, I mean, should really be <laughs> be, be uh, done as soon as the the new assessments are out for the year, or at least, or I guess it's partly the, when the state releases the changes in chapter values, it's the difference between the market value and the actual assessment value based on the state's state's valuation for acreage under chapter. Okay. All right, I will um I will make that the uh, priority to to get that sorted. Thank you. And one other thing on um, the solar plan draft plan came out uh, recently and I think it was circulate Mary circulated it. It's long, but it's good. But one mm -hmm. thing that they recommended that we should have thought of, we, we've been saying, oh, there should be more canopies over parking lots. Mm -hmm. They think that the height limitation in our solar bylaw might preclude those. Mm -hmm. So we should investigate that, I think, and add it to our um, see if that's a problem. I know when we wrote that, we didn't never envision canopies. So what action do we need to take on that, Judy? Putting it on the agenda to vote or? I think we need to investigate what the height of these canopies really is. Okay. Um, which shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, the um, but, River, River Valley Market in East Hampton just put one up, so they, they probably have all the specs. Yeah. And well, I'm sure somebody probably FERCOG could tell us or or this study was done with UMass, and boy, UMass has many, many of them over parking. Yeah, well, maybe we could just ask what they what they think. The yeah, that's probably. I could um, email our consultant who um, we've been working with on the plan and ask her for some data on that. Yeah, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the thing is whether we change the height limit or just put in, uh, add a phrase to the bylaw that says it doesn't apply to whatever the technical term for canopies is. Okay, because we have ours lower so they're not as obtrusive. Yeah. Versus they would need to be higher if they were on a parking lot. Yeah, so hopefully ours are high. We're supposed to be high enough so that so that you could do dual use and have farming under them. But, but I notice up at the up at the jail up in Greenfield there. So they're pretty tall. Theirs are anyway. And I mean, there's all kinds of vehicles at UMass that park under those. So you have to have clearance probably for a good 
a pickup truck that's lifted and ha is like a 350, so a very large pickup truck or van. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So those specs should be somewhere at UMass. Well, these consultants seem to be very good. So, so um... excellent. Okay. So that'll be getting that information and then we can examine our own bylaw. Yeah. See what we I need. think we're sort of slowly making a list of bylaw changes. It's going to be another fun town meeting. <laughs> We go on to minutes. Sounds Do good. Start with submission date. I sent some around um, after our July meeting. Yeah, let's do that one. Which, of course, are brilliant, but of course. What's the, what's the date on that one? July 13th. 12th. 12th. Well, they're probably sent on the third one. Okay, right. The title of the document is PB Draft Minutes 7-13-23, but the meeting was on the 12th. I... Is it this one? There's a duplicate word. Grant did some edits. But they didn't show up on the on OneDrive and I didn't do a comparison. And I didn't know. No, it was on the 29th meetings. So there was something that was, was it that one? Well, it's not that important. It was just, no, I will vote to approve the July 12th minutes as amended. Seconded. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Thank you. And are the only other minutes we had from March, or did we have some others that Mary had gotten us? I think these are the only ones. So March, the March 29th ones? Yeah. March 29th. So where the highlights are for the text related to verification inspection requirements to be determined. Hey. Sorry. That um, was the way it, that was the way the document they sent. Okay. Looked. Gotcha. And as it turned out, they never they never wanted to do that, which is one reason we voted not to recommend it. Well, I sent some changes. And I propose accepting the March 20. Do you have anything, any changes, Tom? No. I'm just... No. It's lacking the documentation of the. Yeah. Of the files. So we could vote it subject to that being completed. Yeah. You have some very good revisions. And yeah, there's a lot of. Still. I had a couple of questions too, but I think. Yeah. I mean, one of them was just take out all this text that is really should be just in the file. 
Yeah. Which we said before, so I'm not quite sure why she did it again. But... Yes, I recommend approving them with Julie's Judy, oh God, Judy's um, revisions and pending the questions being answered. Second. All in favor? Stick. Okay. Next meeting. Anything else? Must be that Don talks all the time. Yeah, it's definitely Don. He wasn't at the last meeting either, was he? Don? No, I don't think he was. Yeah. I chased him down on they one. Take the Let's not go too far into this till we record. We don't Are record. we? Are we? Uh, let's set the next meeting and adjourn, and then discuss. Good. It'd be great if it wasn't on the set date, but um. Because I think I have someone in town, but I think we're okay. October, last week of October. Which is like the 26th. Is when we don't need, right now, we don't need to schedule anything else before October 25th. I'm, I'm out of town on, for a week starting the 26th. Is that what you want to do the week? the night before you're out of town or do you want to see if we can move this up to the 18th? 18th, 18th would be more. I'll be away on the 18th. <laughs> yeah, the 25th may be hard for me too. I have, I think I have someone visiting that evening. What about the 24th? It's the old date. Right, but who who is uh, on, who's on Tuesday night? Select board? Took over Tuesday. Sylvie, but I think the rest of us could do it probably. Um, I think I can. Uh, I can manage Tuesday. I'm sure I can figure something out with that. They only meet every. They might. They probably don't meet on the last Tuesday anyway. Let's we'll see if if Brant can do it. The twenty fourth. The, actually, the thirty first is a Tuesday, so it's the second to the last Tuesday. But let's run, yeah, let's run um run this by Brant and Dawn. So tentatively for the 24th. Okay. Okay, I will move to adjourn. Move to adjourn and shut off the recording. And